Praise and glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. All praise and glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. I'm going to be reading Psalm 19, Psalm 19, from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And I'll take this all up to the Lord in prayer. And you can follow along in your Bible. And uh, always pray before you read God's Word. And ask God to you know guide you and lead you to wisdom, knowledge, understanding. For the Holy Spirit is your teacher. Now take this up to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Psalm 19 is a beautiful psalm. It is a psalm of David. And it states here right underneath, it says, The creatures show God's glory, the word his grace, to the chief musician, music, to the chief mu musician, a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. All creation show the glory of God. They declare it. They praise God. The rocks are singing it. We do, you know, they're all praising God. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out throughout all the world, all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Tabernacle means the sun has its own timeline to cross our, our, our sky. Now back then they didn't have that word for it. They didn't have the word timeline or anything like that. And with the book of Enoch, if you ever read the book of Enoch, he says it's a chariot. He said it's a chariot. And I remember, um, just off FYI, off back when I was in sixth grade, we studied, um, in sixth grade, in the history class of sixth grade, um, I had, yeah, I had studied about, like, you know, the Greeks and their mythology and all that, which is all real and true because they're all Nephilim and stuff. But how they would say that one of the Nephilim gods rode his chariot across the sky, and that was his, his son chariot, which was referencing Enoch who was describing the chariot, the sun's chariot, which is another name for timeline. The sun has a timeline across our sun, our sky. It has its own individual timeline that God created himself. And <clears throat> that line goes out throughout all the world, all the earth. Now remember, God's word has multiple meanings, multiple dimensions to it. If you catch my drift, it's also this meaning when their line go out all through, their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. It also represents the first fruits. See, it's between you and the Lord what you believe it, but I believe that there are two groups, the first fruits, and then there's the multitude. Now, when back in the Old Testament, when they would have grow a whole load of crops, let's say they grew a whole load of barley, the gleanings, the first gleanings of the crop was considered sacred and holy and was given to the Levite priests. And then the rest was given to the multitude and then the, last, the rest of the crops, the little gleanings left, were given to the widows and to the poor and the needy. You wouldn't take all of it. So when you go in and harvest the barley, the first, the first barley that went was harvested and ripe and ready to be to be harvested would go to the Levite priests. Then the rest of the crop would go to the multitude, and then you would leave like the leftovers that had ripened at the end, like the you know little little leftovers of, of it for the for the poor, for the hungry, and for the widow and for the orphan. Well, it's the same thing. There is going to be, the restrainer is the bride of Christ, the first fruits, those people who are walking with the Lord really closely, like Enoch and Elijah, that's, that's where Enoch and Elijah, they're referencing to the first fruits who walk with God completely. They've been walking with them their whole lives. They love God more than anything. They've gotten rid of all the unforgiveness, everything out of their lives. They walked out of the world. They left the B system, which is the system of world system. They don't care about, you know, having, you know, cars. You know, they go to work and have families, yes. 
but they don't care about cars, materialistic possessions, clothes, the things of the world. They don't care about it. They don't care about sitting there watching TV. They're completely dedicated to God, and they love God more than anything. They love him more than their own lives. And if God tells them they need to do this, even though their husband says, we need to go here, and you're saying, no, God told me I have to do this. And even though your husband is arguing with you and demanding you to go over there, and you do what God tells you, that's what a first order is. They choose to obey God over their, their husbands, their wives, their children, their jobs, everything. God is more important. God and his son, Lord Jesus Christ, is more important to them. They're like Enoch and Elijah. Remember, Enoch had left his family. He chose to leave his family and his sons to follow God. They chose to follow God with all their heart and soul, both Enoch and Elijah. And they're both two people that both got trans got raptured, got transfigured, and went up to be with God. For they and remember it says in God's word that Enoch had walked with God. He was right and he and he and he pleased God. He pleased God. God loved him and he pleased God. He, he God was number one and he walked with him and one day he we they never saw him again. He every day he took walks with God and he was close as good to God as Beyond anything I could, you know, imagine, you know, what I mean, I'm trying to imagine the best I can, but, um, yeah, he was that, that close with God. And he was the first, and they represent the first fruits. And they're going to go out in all the world and help with the harvest, help those, you know, accept Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, help those let go of unforgiveness. Because there's so many people that are in, you know, they're Christians that love Jesus they accepted Lord Jesus Christ their Savior, and they're sanctified by the blood to death because they still have, you know, unforgiveness from their childhood, like some past memory event. They still have, like, you know, family curses and generational curses and stuff that need to be renounced and let go of. They still have, you know, a lot of things that need to be taken care of and a lot of understanding. A lot of people don't even know we're in the end times. And so these people need to get the need to get help and God knows that God really knows that and so when the word when things start really falling apart because the restrainer is the first fruits once they're taken out things are going to the antichrist is going to show up the three days of darkness is going to happen and everything's going to fall apart but God's not going to leave he's going to still be here and, and a lot of people believe that the, the Holy Spirit is the restrainer the Holy Spirit ain't going nowhere because if the Holy Spirit leaves, then how are people going to get saved and how people are going to come to Christ? You know what I mean? So, the Holy Spirit's not going anywhere. And the only time the Holy Spirit's going to leave is if someone takes the mark of the beast. And it's between you and God if you believe that the magic ocean potion is the mark of the beast. And it's between you and God if you believe anything I say. Exactly, take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I'm just a voice on the other end of a speaker. <laughs> so... And just another part is there are two groups of the one for, um, of the bride of Christ. They're both one forty four four thousand. The first first fruits, um, they'll reference like the tribes of Israel in the Book of Revelations. Now they don't have to exactly be people that are of the Hebrew bloodline. They can be people grafted in. So say you have this girl named Susie Q who walked with the Lord her whole life. She's been sanctified to the Lord. She does everything he he asks of her, and she loves him more than her own life. Loves him more than more than more than anything in this world. But she has no Hebrew bloodline. Let's just say her bloodline is is, is mostly um, subtropical African. She, by accepting Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, she has a new birth, and she is born in Christ. And she gets grafted into one of the tribes of Israel. She could be grafted into the tribe of Judah. Just for, for an example. And then she, and going by her level with, with, with Jesus, she could either be the first group of first fruits, which are called the faithful. You can read about it in God's word. And take this all to the Lord in prayer. They're the faithful. And by being the, the faithful, she'll get, um, she represents Jesus being fully God and will be given, 
should be transformed into a into a glorified spiritual like body and will be sent back to earth to help with the harvest and help get those the all the other members of the body Christ the multitude who will be raptured towards the end of the tribulation when Jesus comes in the clouds so they can get out of here and the only way to be raptured and to skip death is to be sanct completely sanctified to get all the family curses off of you all renounced to get rid of all unforgiveness all these things and let go of all these things and if you have like an addiction like say you have an addiction to anime to let go of it and drop it and realize it's you know it's evil and wicked because you have to first learn that it's evil and wicked I can tell you I did not know when I accepted Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and I was following him and reading his word I accepted him like I think the first time maybe as a teenager um, I accepted him repeatedly over and over again so I don't exactly know what what age what year I was to tell you the truth um, and uh, but I didn't know that anime was evil. I didn't know, and I didn't even know in the summer of 2021. I was wearing, still wearing anime t-shirts. It wasn't until the beginning of, um, of 2022 that I started realizing Pokemon was evil, a lot of these things were evil. It was gradual. I started letting go of anime little by little since the, um, the summer of 2021. But I didn't know that. And it was a slow, gradual learning that it was evil and it was wrong. That following Miku Hatsune and Luka Marunge and Rin Kagame and all these other characters, the list can go on and on, was evil. And I didn't know it. I was, I accepted Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I was reading my word. But I didn't know so many things. And again, you know, perish lack of knowledge. But Jesus doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to go with him. And he loves you more than anything. If I had died while I was in that, I know I've gone to heaven. I love Jesus. I just didn't know any better. Um, and that's what I got in my spirit. But it's between you and the Lord. And I'm now rambling. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. So these people need help. And they're going to get the help they need. And they're going to come to, you know, and there's going to be people that need to accept Lord Jesus Christ. They're saved. They don't even know who Jesus is. You know what I mean? There are people who haven't heard the gospel of salvation out there. Right on this earth. In all kinds of places of this world. That have not heard it. And they'll get to hear it. And they'll get to know the truth. And it's going to be amazing. And the second group... Um, which is the second 144K, which also referenced David's army. He had two 144Ks, which equaled 288,000 David's army. You can read about that in the, um, in the Old Testament as well. And they represent Jesus being fully man. They're going to be transformed into perfect bodies, perfect glorified bodies. They're going to be immortal, and nothing's going to hurt them or touch them. And they're going to be walking on this earth, helping people. Along with people from the Old Testament are going to be, Old Testament and New Testament are going to be sent over to help people. To help people come to the Lord. It's going to be amazing because it's going to be the harvest and God's going to, you know, send out his people all over the world. Their line's going to go out through all the world and their words to the end of the world. In them he has sent his tabernacle for the sun. They're going to be out there to help people, to help people come to Christ. And help people let go of unforgiveness. They have a nanny that beat them up when they were a child. And they still hold unforgiveness against this nanny. Even though they forgot about it. And they're 59 years old. But deep down in the back of their mind and their heart. They still hold unforgiveness against this nanny. And they have this anger built in them. And they don't understand why have they all this anger problems. Why they have anger problems. Why they snap and, and flip over the most tiniest thing. They don't understand why. And they love Christ and they read his Bible. And they cry out and ask God to help them get rid of this anger. And they just don't understand. That they uh, they have have that deep down in the back, back of them. And some people, they believe things that are wrong. You know, they need to, you know, get some correction. They believe that, you know, they believe 
in, you know, that maybe they believe something else that I can't, you know, I'm trying to figure out an example here. But, um, you know what I mean? You know, they don't understand right. They believe maybe you should have to, you know, you have to bow down and do these bowing and scraping and, and praying to statues and stuff. And they, and they find out that's wrong. That it's idol tree. And they get correction on it. Because there are people that, are, that truly love Jesus. But they don't know that they shouldn't be bowing down to Jesus statue. <laughs> that it's just a, a, a rock carved into an image. You know what I mean? But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And just because someone who um, is in the level of a first fruiter who worshipped Jesus their whole lives and got themselves sanctified and got all the all the you know all the gunk out of their lives, all the unforgiveness, the anger, the hatred, that they stay they repent every time they even commit a sin. So like um, somebody asks them, Oh, did you uh, discount these items? And they're like, You lied and you said you did, but then you didn't. Then you go over to Jesus and, you know, repent for it instantly. And then they, you know, you know tell them that you're sorry and explain the whole scenario and let it go. And Jesus will take care of it. And he'll say, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. And then try not to make the same mistake again. Because we're all flawed beings. We can't abs can't be absolutely perfect. We will be once we're walking, you know, once we're, once we're Jesus and go to heaven, we're going to, we're never going to sin again. There's no going to be no tears, no crying, no pain, no suffering in heaven. Heaven's going to be beyond anything we can ever imagine. Beyond anything we could ever imagine in this world. So I hope this uh, helps somebody in any way, shape, or form. It's between you and the Lord if you believe it. Um, I would just say get your hearts ready uh, for Jesus with all your heart and soul. He is coming. He is coming. He is going to come back on the clouds. To gather up his whole entire bride. Because there is the faithful. The called and the chosen. And he's going to bring them all up. And they all represent, represent the three groups. The two groups of the, of the first fruits. Which are the faithful. And the called. And then the last group. The multitude is the chosen. But they're all Jesus' bride. And he loves all of them. And just because someone's just in it, you know, is a first fruiter, doesn't make them any better than you. Remember, God's not a respecter of persons. And he loves us all equally. He loves us all of us equally. It's not like a racetrack where you have a bunch of racehorses and the one that wins, everyone loves it and nobody cares about the one that they got in last place. It's not that. Just because you're at just because you just accepted Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior during God's judgments doesn't make you um, and you know doesn't uh, how you put it it doesn't make you any lower or better you're all we're all equal and it's sometimes very hard to take um, to know that because you start feeling like, oh I'm nothing like Enoch why would God want anything to do with me I'm not like Enoch that's a that's dirtbag speaking to you the, the demons the devil you know Satan's hacky crew speaking to you. Don't listen to it. Just because you're not at the same level as Enoch or Elijah or Moses, just to label some, then list some people, doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't love you. That you're not extremely special in God's eyes. You're not a prize, that you're not a prized possession to God and His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You are. You are. And just because you're having a hard time getting over fear or unforgiveness over, over something that happened way back when, doesn't mean you're, you're going to go to like a fire. God knows and understands. And he knows you're struggling and you're trying and you keep calling out to him each and every day. I struggle with one big problem is fear. And learning to be bold as a lion and stand up. And who I know I am is Christ. That is one of my weaknesses. But does that mean that I'm that I should be thrown in like a fire for it and burn for all eternity? No. No, it doesn't. Jesus loves me. Even though I have a lot of faults and a lot of weaknesses. He loves me. And he does the same for you. Let's continue. Hope they can read the rest of this before I run out of memory. <laughs> um all right, where was I? Uh, verse five, five. 
which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. And Lord Jesus Christ is going to be coming out of his chamber for his bride. Hallelujah. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat of it. There is nothing hid from the heat of the sun. And there is nothing hid from Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing hid from him. If you have a secret sin that you think you can hide from, say you're addicted to watching Ente, and you, you, you're thinking, oh, I'll close the door, pull the blinds down, turn the lights off. No one knows. No one knows. I'm in my apartment hidden. Nobody knows. Uh, God knows. It was like this, it's just a little example. There was this woman I read in, um, in an article. She had um, posted, and she was asking for help. It was one like one of those um, like question things. I can't remember the name of the website. Anyway, she had stated she had she fell in love with a AI chatbot who was representing this anime character that she was totally infatuated in love with, and she would and it was and it was an AI chatbot. And she talked to it, and she started fantasizing about it when she was at work and grocery store, and she was engaged to get married, and. The last the six months right before she got married, she was spending all of it, basically focusing on that character instead of focusing on her fiance. And her fiance started noticing that she was spending more and more time with her computer and was wondering what was going on. And then finally, he saw that and read these posts that she was writing to this AI-generated chatbot that you know with the name of this anime character on it. And he found out she was totally in love with it, infatuated with it. And she thought that she had completely hidden. And a sad fact, it broke up the relationship. And this is why Jesus is coming back. He understands this. And he understands that, yeah, how, how fallen this society is. And uh, I wouldn't talk to AI. <laughs> but anyway, but you know what I'm getting at. Like, you thought, she thought she had it all hidden and now... Her fiancé wouldn't find out. Her family wouldn't find out. No one would find out. All the while she was hidden it, God saw it. And he knew it and saw it and knows everything. You can't hide it. You can't carry your laptop and hide in the bathroom and act like, oh, I'm just sitting here cleaning myself and doing your evil sinful deed. You may be able to fool some people for a while, but you're never going to fool God and you can't hide anything from him. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. He, God's bringing judgments upon the wicked to try to chastise them, to come to Christ. That's why he's doing that. You know, like, if you have a child and he acts up in the store, and it's like, he wants this, this, let's just say he wants a toy truck, and he's like, Mommy, I want this toy truck, and demands it, and demands it, and demands it, and has a temper tantrum in the store, and you take him out of the store, go home, and, and you put your son the time out, and tell him he can't act like that, and, you know, get, you know, and chastise him for it, no matter how much he weeps and cries in that corner, you chastise him, make him stay in that time cor corner. So he learns his lesson not to act out and, and that he can't have everything he wants. Well, it's the same thing. God, will God, if he loves you, he's going to chastise you when you walk away from him, when you do things wickedly and you turn back from him. Like say, you accepted Lord Jesus Christ as if you're walking with him. And then you're like, and then you have this boyfriend, you're like, you know... Uh, I think God will be okay. He understands. We'll just, you know, do a few, you know, a few night, have a night together. And God's like, ooh, what's going on here? And he sees what you're doing. And it's fornication. And you go back and you're going to church the next morning and think everything's going to be alright. God's going to chastise you for it. You want blessings, not cursings. And when you commit sin, God's going to chastise you. To try to lead you back to the path of righteousness, the narrow path. Because he doesn't want you to go on the broad way to like a fire. 
That's why he chastises you. If he loves you, he's going to chastise you. And it's the same thing. The reason why we're going to have all these judgments upon, upon the earth is to chastise the wicked and try to get them to respond to Christ. Be more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and, and the honeycomb. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much, much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. That's right. God's true children, his, the, the bride of Christ, Lord Jesus Christ's bride, is more sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. He loves you more than anything. He loves each and every member. He loves you. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and keeping of them there is great reward. And there's going to be great reward for us who follow Jesus and love him with all our heart and soul. There's going to be great reward for us. There's going to be a crown of righteousness I'll put on your head. <laughs> and we're all going to be much less the mansions. Although for me, um, and just to be with Jesus is all the only reward I, I want. Um, I'm not greedy. And I will amend, um, because I don't know what heaven is going to be like. It's a little bit frightening, because... I have no, you know, no experience, no knowledge. I only know have God's word, but I know that Jesus is going to be there, and no matter what, it's going to be all right. And um, heaven is going to be beyond anything we we know, and beyond anything we can understand, because all we know, unless we visited heaven, or um, because there are people that have died and gone to heaven, um. All we know is a sinful world and what it's like to be living in bondage and to see society falling apart and to have people cold-hearted everywhere you go with, with cruelty in their hearts. And it's sad because so many people are blind and lost and so many people have re are rejecting Christ and, and following the, following the things of this world, which is what Satan wants you to do, because he's the prince of this world. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Ask and, and seek Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, and ask you him to, to fill you with the Holy Spirit and show you the broken parts of your heart, to show you all your faults, and ever, so you can work on them. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit and say, What parts of my heart are broken, Lord? What parts of my heart are broken? What what sins am I committed, committing that I need to repent of and turn away from me? Please show me, Lord. Help me. And Lord Jesus Christ will help me. And we'll start revealing things and dig up things. Sometimes very old things. Um, like things from your ch early childhood that you need to come to terms with to forgive and let go. Keep back thy servant from also presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let my words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and, and my Redeemer. That's right. Though we don't have any strength of our own. Our strength comes from the Lord. We physically, and you know, can't, we can't fight spiritual, the spiritual world. <laughs> Not without Christ. I couldn't imagine walking in even one single day without Lord Jesus Christ holding my hand throughout each and every day. I, I couldn't imagine it. Well, I'll be back as the Lord leads, and I wasn't planning this video to be this long. <laughs> I usually try to keep them short because I don't have that much memory on this, on this device that I'm recording with. Well, I'll be back as the Lord leads.